vector addition by x and y components. Instead of the graphical method of vector addition previously discussed, you can also use the orthogonal components for the x and y components. You do each one of them step by step. You add the, you know, so you find all the x components, you add them together. When you add them together, the, uh, that, that, that'll be the x component of the resultant. Strike all this. Okay, so let's compare the vector addition, uh, the graphical vector addition versus the uh, x and y component method. The pros of the graphical vector addition is you visually see the vectors and angles. I mean, that, is, that cannot really be um, underscored. That is, that is pretty cool. Uh, the pros of the x and y components is that it's actually easier than the graphical vector method once you get the hang of it because it's always the same. Uh, it's faster, especially when you have three or more vectors that you're adding. It'll get much, 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 much faster the more vectors you have. Um, the cons, so the cons of the graphical method works better drawn to scale. So if, you're, if you have a ruler with a, you know, draw your vectors, I know they're in kilonewtons, right? But you could pretend those numbers are inches or millimeters or something and draw them. Uh, and they, the angles will be right when you have their relative length appropriate. So my five vector was five over two times as great as my two vector when I drew it. Um, just to make sure that it, the aspect ratio was right and all that. You gotta watch out for those ambiguous cases with the law of signs, and it is a slow method. The cons of the X and Y components is it's more prone to trig errors because the angles in Sakatoa, right? A lot of students, you know, again, just have trouble when the angle is not pulled counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. Uh, and it's prone to trig errors uh, sign-wise as well, because you got to make sure it's, you know, is it pointing in the negative x or in the positive x? It's easy to do, but you have to answer that every time and write it. You're not seeing these vectors. You're calculating these vectors, and they're not on the page yet, so it's it can be... Um, it can, you can get lost in it a little bit because uh, it's less visual. And then finding that orientation, the result, it can be a little bit more tricky because you're not visually seeing it. Final thoughts on 2D vector addition. Using the X and Y components method will be the best way forward going forward, but the graphical method is a great way to see the vector. So as we make it through the rest of this course, it really is going to be the X and Y components that you're going to use. But for this, uh, for this lesson, for this module, it, you know, work with this graphical method because I think it gives you a great feel for how the vectors are acting, orientation and magnitude wise. And please realize, I'll say it again, that these angles that you're going to be dealing with now are more practical angles. They're not always pulled from a positive x axis in the counterclockwise fashion. It's not theta as is shown in every math book. It can be, but it often isn't. Sometimes they're pulled from the negative y or from the negative x or from wherever, okay? So you just have to really remember triangle trick, Sakatoa, sine being opposite over hypotenuse, cosine being adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent being the opposite over the adjacent. If you can do triangle trig and you can do sine and cosine and tangent, those are going to get you through 90-something percent of statics. You don't need to remember any of the fancy trig. This will get you through most everything, Okay. So this is the exact same example, just done with the X and Y component method instead. What we're gonna do is we're gonna find the X component of two and the X component of the five, and then we're gonna find the Y component of the two kilonewtons and the five, sorry, and the Y component of the five kilonewtons. Okay, X is pointing positive to the right, which makes Y pointing positive up, all right? Note again, 30 degrees is this, angle from the y-axis and the 65 is the angle from the x-axis. So this angle here is not pulled from the x-axis as you usually see in math, okay? That's going to be a big problem for some of you in this course because these kind of angles here from the vertical happen all the time. X components. So we just calculate the X components of each one. Well, what's the X component of the two kilonewtons going to be? Is it going to, do I need to use cosine or sine? Say it out loud. I want to hear. Oh, wait, I'm not actually in the room with you. But you said something. What did you say? Did you say cosine or did you say sine? X component, if you did it, uh, 
theoretical high school math, you said, well, the x component is always uh, the angle times the cosine. Well, this angle is not from the x-axis, so you need to use the sine here. Remember, um, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Here's my angle, so opposite is this side over hypotenuse. So that side is my x component. So I have 2 kilonewtons times the sine of 30 gives me 1 kilonewton. Okay, it's positive because it's pointing in the direction of positive x. So what about this one? This one's going to be 5 kilonewtons times sine or cosine of 65. Cosine. You got that one right. I know. I, I heard you say that one right. 5 kilonewtons times cosine of 65 is 2.113 kilonewtons. That's also positive because it is also pointing in the, in the direction of positive x. Now let's look at the resultant's x component. The resultant's x component is just the summation of, the, of these two forces x components. So I just add these two numbers together, right? Because those two components are both pointing in the same direction. I can add them. And I get 3.113 kilonewtons. That's the x component of the resultant. Now let's do the same thing with the y components. So y component, 2 kilonewtons. Oh, cosine now, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. 2 kilonewtons times the cosine of 30 degrees, 1.732 kilonewtons. Positive because it's pointing up in the positive y direction. This one, however, 5 kilonewtons times the sine of 65 is minus 4.532 because it's pointing in the negative y direction. So the resultant's y component, 1.732 minus 4.532 is equal to, you guessed it, negative 2.8 kilonewtons. Okay, so what does that mean? I can take the square root of the sum of the squares because now I have the x component and the y component, right? So I can find the resultant very easily. I don't have to do the law of cosines. I can just do the Pythagorean theorem. Pretty cool. 4.187 kilonewtons. Check that versus the slide a couple slides ago. It's going to be the same. All right. Orientation of F sub R. All right. This, one is, this is where this method even has a little bit of problem. Again, trig is great. These sinusoidal functions, you know that, they're, that they repeat, right? They, they have their, their sinusoidal. They go up and down and up and down and up and down. So you have to, just like we had the ambiguity in the other method, you, we kind of have an ambiguity here too. The orientation of the resultant force, what we can do is we know the y component, right? Minus 2.8. We know the x component, 3.113. So I can plug them in and do rise over run. So just take the arc tangent of that, okay? Well, the problem is, is so, you know, sometimes you can have a negative up here and a positive down there like we're having, or it can be positive up here and negative down there, or it can be negative and negative, or positive and positive. And depending on, you know, there's, there's two different combinations there. You end up with an overall negative number or overall um, positive number. There are four quadrants, so you're going to have a potential for, for having some confusion. The way I like to tell you to do it is to is to write it with the negative sign in the in the numerator or the denominator as appropriate. Um, the numerator is the y force, right? So it's the minus 2.8. And so then the x force is down below. So negative up top, positive down below means that we have a negative y component and a positive x component, which means this resultant is going to be acting down here in this fourth quadrant. Okay. So when you solve for that, you get negative 42 degrees or 42 degrees clockwise. So that's, uh, that's going to be the same answers we found before. That's pretty cool. So those were two different methods. Again, the X and Y components is going to be the one that you're going to use a lot more, but that first one's good to know as well.